Anything with charged particles and electrical energy is going to create an electromagnetic field. For living organisms, this is usually just called a bioelectromagnetic field. Cellular metabolism, muscles, your heart, nerve impulses, the central nervous system, all of these are generating magnetic fields. Because we conduct electricity, the electrical field of your finger allows us to use capacitive touch screens, like your iPhone. When you touch your phone, the capacitive matrix detects that change and translates it into coordinates based on how it's programmed. If there's enough electrical energy, the keys can actually be interrupted without physically touching it. Your laptop keyboard works similarly. When you press down on a key, it activates a switch within the key matrix, and your finger's conductivity is what bridges the gap, completes the circuit, and allows for the computer to read what key you pressed. Wireless communication works by taking a transmitter device, encoding information such as audio or video, and turning it into a sign function. The sign function is transmitted as an electromagnetic wave, and then a receiver device picks it up and decodes the data. There's obviously some fundamental differences between a human and an iPhone, but the main differences are simply in the type of receiver and transmitter as well as the user interface. Our interface is our bodies and our receivers are our sensory organs and our transmitters are our words and our thoughts and um, anything that we emit. Now, one of the things that we can actually emit are electromagnetic frequencies. Every cell in the body, whether it's a muscle cell or a nerve cell, creates a biophoton. A biophoton is an ultra-weak photon emission. So the internal system of the body is lit up by these biophotons, as well as they are emitted from the surface of the body. They are usually outside of our normal visual spectrum, except when they occur inside the eye, in which case they are called phosphenes. So phosphenes are biophotons that are taking place in the visual system or the visual cortex. These biophotons aren't simply a byproduct of cellular activity, but are essential for cell growth and communication. They also help to coordinate the body's hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions every single second. The intensity of biophoton emissions are influenced by metabolism, by anatomic layout, by moods and states of mind, by diseases, and other sources of light. In short, they are part of and react to physiological states. So biophotons are electromagnetic waves that have information encoded in them, just like your radio frequencies for wireless communication. It's because humans and computers are taking advantage of the same forces of light, electromagnetism, encoding information, and decoding that information they're able to interact in interesting ways which we associate with psychic phenomena. One example is talking to your computer if it's malfunctioning or glitching out in order to restore its circuitry. Another example is willing your algorithm to show certain kinds of content or having a precognition of what the next video will be. Similarly, with shuffling a playlist, you can influence what the next song will be. Still, more phenomena include thinking about someone and texting them, and it happens to be that they were also thinking about you and texted you at the same time. By thinking of that person, the biophotons were encoded with that thought and emitted and received and picked up subconsciously by the other person. Because the interface and the receiving device is different, the information from biophotons isn't popping up into your head like a text message. It's a different kind of encoded information with a different kind of decoder. Just as the eyes receive light particles and transduce that into electrical signals, electrical signals can be transduced into light particles and emitted as electromagnetic waves that still have information encoded into it. Other than interacting with technology and really anything that has an electromagnetic field, even something like a tree, information being transcoded and translated from one to the other, we can talk about a few other really interesting phenomena. We'll start with eye contact. What happens when you're staring at someone in the eyes for a long period of time? The more you excite the nerves of the visual system, the more biophotons are going to be emitted from the eyes. And keep in mind, the eyes are part of the central nervous system. They're the part that converts light into electrical signals. So when two people are looking into each other's eyes, they are sharing these biophotons. 
This leads to a lot of synchronous electrical and chemical reactions that's shared between the two people. The longer the gaze is held, the more trance-like it becomes because the visual system is innervated. It's having increased nerve supply, which emits more of these biophotons that have encoded information to them. And that encoded information is based off of what you're thinking, and therefore you're able to synchronize thoughts between each other. You can gaze into someone's eyes and start to be able to read what they're thinking. Not because you're seeing what they're thinking, because they're emitting what they are thinking through these encoded biophotons. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but we'll come back to this in a moment. So what happens when you have rhythm and oscillation? When you're physically rocking or swaying back and forth, or you're dancing, or any kind of rhythmic movement, you're actually creating hypersynchronous activity in different regions of the brain. There's an endless amount of different tempos and patterns that you can move in, right? You could go in like a horseshoe sway. You could just be in a rocking chair. There's different kinds of dances with entire choreographies. You also have something as simple as stepping on one foot and then turning around and shifting to the other foot and swaying back and forth in a million different ways. It could range from something really intense and ecstatic to something really gentle, almost like seaweed swaying in a current. When you're swaying in a rhythm, you're shifting blood flow from one hemisphere back to the other, and this is also associated with electrical activity increasing where you have blood flow. So you're synchronizing certain regions of the brain and then synchronizing to other regions of the brain, and it's going back and forth in this oscillation. You've basically got this sinusoidal oscillation going on. Because the brain is what is processing and interpreting information, when you're synchronizing it, you're synchronizing different regions of the brain into a sort of rhythm of thought. I think that the best metaphor for understanding what's going on in the brain when swaying, dancing, or rocking is if you have a drum, and on the drum skin, you pour a fine powder, and then you take the sticks, and when you tap on the drum, the powder is going to organize based off of the vibrations. The synchronicity of nerves is essentially a mild epileptic activity. A seizure is a sudden, uncontrolled burst of electrical activity in the brain, and depending on where that takes place will determine what kind of seizure it is. So this swaying and dancing, that oscillation, is more like a controlled burst of electrical activity. All this to say that when you focus on something, or you meditate, or you're using your imagination, or you're thinking of something, you're having this rhythm of brain activity that's going to enhance and kind of cause these biophoton emissions to be in greater quantity. You're producing a thought form. It's an aurora of encoded light signals. It's an amorphous mass of biophotons that's emitted or projected. Because the physiological states are increasing biophoton activity, when you have this oscillation that causes the synchronicity, the rhythm, and when you're focusing or fixating on something, you're projecting that in much stronger quantities. This could actually be intense enough to see with the naked eye under the right circumstances, such as a foggy day or when the clouds are overcast at night and the light is refracted by all the moisture in the air. So what happens when you combine gazing into someone's eyes with swaying or dancing. And you don't actually have to have any physical contact because the biophotons are gonna be emitted in such a focused way from one person's eyes to the other that you're going to complete the circuit. Being in that trance or flow with this stream of ultra-weak light is creating a bridge and you're going to blend sort of your central nervous systems, your consciousness. The magnetic fields of the body are basically combining into one. You're not necessarily sharing in each other's perceptions, but there's a sort of extrasensory thought form that is generated that you're both participating in. And there's a lot more to this when we talk about completing the circuit physically or emitting biophotons from the hands, such as with Reiki. And there's still more that has to do with phosphenes and after images and the way the visual system works, but we'll talk about that next time. Thanks for watching.